So we're going to get started on C++ right away. And uh, if you have any questions or if I miss anything at any point, please feel free to uh, interrupt me. Feel free to just speak up. And also, if you think I'm going too fast or too slow, <clears throat> you can also tell me that. So uh, if you guys already have C++ on your PC and you, uh, you have an ID and everything, then you should open that up right now. And if you don't, you can go on Replit. Uh, I think it's like replit.com. And that'll take you to somewhere like this. I think you might need to sign up and you just create a REPL like that. Select C++, name it, whatever you want, and then you can click create. And that'll just be an online editor where you can uh, edit your code. You can just write C++ here. Uh, so if you don't have C++ on your computer, go on Replit to write C++. Okay, I'll give you like 10 seconds. Okay, uh, I'm gonna assume you have everything open now. So uh, to learn C++, uh, this is the C++ documentation. So uh, everything built into C++, uh, there, you're gonna find information on here. And also obviously, uh, if you have like any errors, anything you wanna know about C++, you can always use Google. That, that'll be your best, best friend learning a language. So uh, open up a C++ file and we're gonna get started uh, with uh, including standard library headers. So um, everything, if you wanna use the functions and the containers of the C++ uh, library, the standard library, you're going to need to include the header files. And so uh, a very common thing that we do in competitive programming is we start off with include uh, bit slash scd C++ dot h so this is actually not a standard uh, header file so, and if you look into the scd c++ dot h you'll see that it contains all of these other files and if you wanted to you could actually just um, paste all of these includes into here and that would do the same thing but just to save us some time and we don't want to write all of this into our code each time we need something uh, we just add this one line. Uh, if you're using Mac or some other compiler that's not GCC, uh, I don't think you can do this, but uh, if you're using uh, GCC compilers, this should work. And right after that, uh, we usually add one line using namespace scd. And so what, what that does is that um, usually you would need to add std and two colons before any uh, function or container that uh, from the standard library. And if you do this, you wouldn't have to. Like, for example, uh, the Python kind of equivalent of this is if you did import Pygame, you would have to do pygame.draw something to use, like, its functions and stuff. But if you did from pygame import star you would just do draw right this is for both those of you that know python so is there a question don't don't see anything okay uh, i'm gonna continue then okay so oh, yeah. uh, if you guys, uh, if you guys have any questions you can just kind of say them yeah yeah anytime you have a question please ask please Okay, so program structure. So every time um, your program is uh, run by the compiler and the online judge, uh, it'll go to your main function. So um, this will be your starting function. And so inside the main function at the end, you put return zero at the end to show that you've executed the function successfully. And so uh, for now, your code will go inside here. So you can't have code just uh, randomly out here uh, if you're trying to execute something that wouldn't work. And that's and for those of you taking uh, ICS for you, that would be similar to what you would put in like a public static void main function. 
And um, so now let's talk about variables and primitive types. So uh, actually, since you're in the senior stream, you guys already know uh, what variables are and what types are. So uh, int is the integer type. So that's a 32-bit integer. And you can just declare an, uh, an integer i, or let's just say a equals 1. And uh, 1 will be stored uh, in this variable a. Uh, long longs, that'll be your 64-bit uh, integer, and th those can store a much larger integer, but they also take more memory. So, for example, you could s store a l number that's very large, and uh, it won't overflow. Uh, shorts, you don't need to worry about shorts. You would usually never need shorts. The only reason you would ever use them is if you're running out of uh, memory, but the default in C CCC is uh, 256 megabytes, so usually don't have to worry about that. I shouldn't be deleting my code. Uh, chars, uh, so this is just one character, and your, your characters need to be surrounded by uh, single quotes. So this would store the character C and the variable C. That's a little confusing, actually. I'll store that. Uh, bool, bool st stores uh, true or false, so bool d is equal to true, uh, is what you can do. And so uh, in C++, uh, whenever you want, uh, a ver you want a variable, you need to declare it, and uh, you can also initialize it. So uh, by saying int a, I'm declaring the variable a as an int. And by saying a equals 1, I'm assigning the value 1 to a. But you could do this in one step, which is what I did here, um, and just say int a equals 1. But you don't, you don't have to um, initialize it. So uh, now let's talk about uh, input and output. So the most common way of uh, taking an input in C++ is to use cin. So if we declared an integer e, and we said C in E, then uh, whatever input we took will go inside the variable E. And the way you output in uh, C++ is you use C out. So let's say I put something in my input like 67. And you would uh, compile and run that. And we, we can see that um, our variable e stores uh, the number 67. And how c in and c out works is that, oh, I should talk about new lines. So um, you'll often see people do new lines as uh, nl. So this will terminate the line. So for example, if I wanted to output e twice on separate lines, this wouldn't work because uh, you didn't terminate the line when you uh, outputted this, so it would be right next to each other. But if you did, uh, you would want to add an end line here, and that would bring you to a new line. I'm just waiting for the thing to compile. But uh, and L is slow, so what would do the same thing is uh, a string of a backslash character, and this is how you're going to want to t uh, terminate your lines in C++. This is, the, uh, this is what you want to do in competitive programming because uh, it is slightly more efficient. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, I also want to talk about uh, how the input is tokenized. So a token is whatever is separated by white space. So in Python, your input function was, for example, um, something equals input and that input will get the entire line but that's not the case with C++ let me just demonstrate that so for for example if I had uh, variables e and f and I said uh, oh I should mention uh, when you're using cn you should be using uh, angle brackets that point to the right and if, when you're using c out you should use double angle brackets that point to the left and you can also take an input like that. And so that would take an input uh, of both E and F. 
and now let's output them separated by one space and terminating the line and as you can see uh, uh, the variable E stores 67 and F stores 56 which is what I inputted into them but um, they don't have to be on separate lines they can also be uh, on the same line they can have they can be in between multiple lines you can have tabs you can have more uh, new lines you can have more spaces and even though they're very far apart and they're not on the same line or not on separate lines at all I mean not right next to each other um, they would still the input would still be work fine because it ignores all the white space um, so that's kind of for those of you uh, in ICS for you this should make a lot of sense because uh, Java's next should be J Java's next stint should be pretty similar to this. Oh, uh, I also want to talk about fast I/O. So, uh, C in and C out is uh, relatively slow in C++. So, what you want to do, uh, what you could do, is uh, at the top of your main program, you can do iOS uh, sync with a CDIO. Oh, sorry. Uh, it should be iOS base, I think. Zero and cn dot tie zero. Oh, uh, another thing I forgot to mention: uh, each of your lines should be terminated by a semicolon, and it doesn't matter uh, how it's indented, as long as it uh, has a semicolon, uh, they know to stop there. So you could put everything on one line if you wanted to. You can put them on separate lines. It doesn't matter too much. Um, you could also separate stuff with commas, but uh, after the declaration of a type, you should always end with a semicolon. So for example, uh, if you want to do a equals one and let's say x equals six, you could do that, but you can't go uh, int uh, a equals one and then char, char c equals a and that, that that comma right there would not work as a separator like that. So uh, going back to fast input, these two lines uh, are going to make your C in and C out a lot faster than they usually are. And I can't really demonstrate this on here because I don't have a huge uh, input file. But when you do, uh, this is going to speed up your uh, input output significantly. Uh, one caveat is that uh, usually uh, your input is sorry your output is flushed so that means when you write C out it actually just writes to the output file directly but if you put these two lines in uh, what's gonna happen is when uh, at the end it'll just put all your uh, output out uh, in one piece kinda like just uh, it'll output everything at once so uh, having these two statements might not be what you want when you're debugging. So, yeah. Uh, and another way to get input in C++ is the scanf. So don't use both cn, cout, and um, scanf. So use one of cn or scanf. I usually use cn because it's just easier, but scanf is also an option. So uh, with scanf, uh, you would use it like so. You would have to uh, put a mod uh, percent %d here uh, to specify that you're taking in integers. And then you would, uh, and this would also ignore white space, I believe. I don't use scanf very often. So, uh, and then uh, you would put an and symbol uh, before each character and this should scan uh, E and F into the input and print F you would also put uh, put them like so and if we want them space separated we would just add a space E F and that should also work my compilation is kind of slow Right. 
So this is another way to get input output. Um, the speed compared to CNC out, um, it's faster than CN and C out, but uh, if you have CN and C out with fast input and output, then uh, CN and C out is slightly faster on average. Uh, I think for doubles, this is faster. But I, I just find this very annoying to type compared to just C N E F. Um, so this is just much easier to me. Uh, get line. Okay, so let's say you actually wanted to uh, get an entire line. Uh, actually, first of all, I missed doubles and I also missed strings. Let's talk about strings right now. So. Um, a string in C++ is not a primitive type. A uh, string would be a CD string if we didn't have the STD, using namespace STD. And so if we wanted to declare a string uh, G, and we said C and G, that would still be tokenized. So uh, if I wrote C out G new line, Uh, what would happen is, uh, let me run that again, actually. What would happen is uh, you would only get the first one because CN is uh, always the, takes in the next token. But if what you actually want is uh, 67 space for this entire line, then you can't uh, use CN like that. What you would do instead is you would use get line CN comma G. And so that would get the entire line. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, G is uh, 67 space 4. Uh, just like that. Uh, you won't need get line very often. Uh, usually, uh, CN and CO will be uh, enough to solve problems. But um, just in case you need it, you know how to use it. Uh, so I forgot to talk about doubles here, sorry. So going back to doubles, let, let me define, uh, let me declare a double. So you would just do it like any other primitive type that we did. So if we had a double H, um, you can just store uh, floating point numbers in doubles. And so, um, long doubles, it's almost like the long long t is to int, uh, um, is like long double to double. It'll just store, uh, be able to store larger numbers and possibly to better precision, but I'm not sure about that part. And long double, uh, yeah, you can just store a large, uh, larger number, I believe. And so, uh, okay, so computers can't store uh, doubles perfectly precise. So sometimes uh, it'll ha give you unexpected results. Um, so if you wanted to compare doubles, um, sometimes you would just check if the number, instead of checking if a double is equal to what you expect, you would check uh, whether it's close enough. And we'll, we'll talk about that when we uh, deal with problems that uh, require doubles. Um, set precision. Okay, so uh, when you have a double that has a lot of um, numbers after the decimal, uh, like that, if we try to output it, let me get rid of the input here. Let me check if there are any questions in uh, Senior. Uh, lag out of the stream. Oh. Uh, can you hear me? Slow down. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've never taught anyone anything. Oh, uh, if, if you're trying to copy it, uh, don't worry. I think I'll, uh, I'll do something. 
have I been deleting stuff? I think I have been deleting stuff. That's not good. Maybe I should start commenting stuff out instead of deleting them. Um, I could just uh, send you all the code when I'm done, but I won't <laughs> guarantee that I uh, have everything not deleted. Uh, we'll create a lesson plan. Wait, I don't know about this. Interesting. Yeah, because yeah, that uh, was kind of fast, so. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm back. Um, are we ready? Okay, I think we're ready. Uh, so what I was. Yeah, what I was saying is uh, if you tried to output um, and then uh, a double like that, uh, actually, let me make this double have more digits. So if, if it had a lot of uh, floating points, what would happen is um, yeah, th it's kind of slow. So, OK, that's not what I wanted to show. Okay, um, so it kind of uh, rounds it, but what I wanted to show was when it um, did stuff in. Oh wait, I'm 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 dumb. Ignore that example. Sorry. Okay, so if you had something like zero point zero 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 zero, and then uh, with a one at the end. Um, it obviously won't just give you a zero, it, it can't do that. Um, it'll, I'll put it in scientific notation like this. And I don't know if this, this is not scientific notation, I'm sorry. But this just means like um, one times um, 10 to the negative 10, right? Something like that. And so um, uh, most online judges won't accept this and you don't want it to do that. And so what you would add here is um, you can do C out fixed. Oh, sorry. Uh, so that'll give you a fixed amount of decimal points, but also you wanted to output um, a lot of uh, decimal points after that. And I think it defaults to six decimal uh, points. So, uh, what you would do is uh, also say set pre precision. Um, so we can make this like twenty or something, and hopefully that'll output everything and more. Right. So uh, you can see here, it's outputted this, and I set the precision to exactly twenty, and it so it outputted uh, twenty. I, I don't want to count that, but. I think that's 20 after the decimal there. And so whenever you're outputting doubles uh, and you're getting wrong answer and you don't know why, uh, just remember uh, you might need fixed and set precision. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we can talk about operators now. Um, uh, I let me not delete that. Okay, I'll just comment this out. Actually, I think I've been deleting stuff just subconsciously, and I shouldn't do that. So operators in C++ just work as you expect them to mostly. So if I had uh, a plus b, um, so a was declared here. Unless you, uh, in case you didn't see it. So that'll uh, give us the result of a plus b and uh, plus, minus, multiply, divide. Oh, I want to talk about division. So if I had something like um, a divided by b, uh, that would not give me a double since so this is an int. This is a long, long int. Um, that would actually just give me zero because um, 
it's not going to store any decimal points since both data types are int. But if you had a double, it would, uh, I believe it would give you a double. So C, like C++ divide is kind of like integer division uh, in Python if it's like only between integers. Right. And if, if there's like a double or like anything with a decimal, then it just behaves like normal Python divide. Right, exactly. So uh, if you have a double in one of them, I believe it becomes a double. But if they're both integers, then uh, it would truncate the result and truncate is different from flooring because if you had negative one over two uh oh whoops that's what i meant was this i don't think it matters too much though um that would give you zero even though the floor of negative one over two is negative one so it just truncates the integer like that um what other operators? Okay, the percent. Um, this is the modulo operator. So uh, that gives you the remainder of this divided by this. And so the remainder of 7 divided by 3 is hopefully 1. Compilation is a little slow. And so that outputs 1 for us. Um, let's talk about plus plus and minus minus. So if I had a variable, I already have variables. Okay, if I just wanted to use the variable a, um, let's uh, try to output a plus plus and then let's output a. So what plus plus does to integers is that it increments them. So you had a equals one, and so it outputted one, and then it did the plus plus operator after it outputted the one. So it evaluated it after, sorry, it evaluated it before it incremented. And then it, uh, when we out, go and output that again, the value is now two. But if we put plus plus before the a, uh, what would happen is that uh, A gets incremented and then it gets evaluated. And so now both would be two. So difference is that this gets uh, incremented before it's evaluated and A++ gets evaluated before it's incremented. And the same thing with uh, minus minus. They're, uh, they're opposites. So. And did I mention it just adds one and subtracts one? I think I did. Uh, ternary operators, so these are kind of just uh, conditionals. So let me comment that out. Um, so how this works is you put a condition here. This is not code, I'm just trying to uh, show you how this works. Condition, and you put a question mark and you would put true true value here and then you would put the false value here and I'll demonstrate this in a minute so if say my condition was uh, D which up here I uh, declared that as true so D and so uh, if it's true then we want uh, to output 1 if it's false then I want to output 0 that seems simple enough. So, yeah, I'm just waiting for it to compile. So, D was true. So, it, it you chose this value to evaluate. So, this entire expression evaluated to this value. But had D been false, uh, hopefully, it outputs this value instead. Right, so uh, this zero was chosen instead of the one because D was false in that case. Hope that makes sense. Are there any questions in chat? Uh, are the lessons being recorded? Uh, yes, I think.
This says recording, right? I think so. Okay. Um, uh, I think we can talk about loops now. So a for loop in C++ is a little bit different than in Python. So you would type for, and then you would open up with a bracket. And so first, uh, in the first section, you would um, have your loop control variable or your iterator, uh, whatever you put in here. So commonly you would put, I didn't use I up here, did I? Okay, good. Uh, so you can declare uh, a variable I and set it equal to zero. And you end that section with a semicolon. And so you declare it and you initialize it in the first section. And right here, uh, you check uh, when you should terminate. So I want to terminate, uh, uh, I don't want to terminate as long as uh, i is smaller than six. So this loop uh, goes from zero to five and it when it reaches six, it won't satisfy this anymore. And so the loop will stop. And here you would uh, do your operation on i. So you can say i plus plus or plus plus i, it doesn't really matter here. You can do i plus equals two if you want to. Um, just whatever uh, operation you want to do to i. Uh, I'm just going to do plus plus i here. And here it doesn't matter whether you use plus plus or a plus plus i or i plus plus because uh, you're just incrementing it and this, uh, wh whatever this gets evaluated doesn't really matter. So uh, if I just printed out i every time it ran and ended that with a new line, uh, as, as you can see, uh, I went from zero to five and it stopped. So uh, I guess you can uh, think about it as you initialize i to a value. It checks whether this condition, uh, whether the value of i satisfies this. And then it goes through the loop and then it performs this, and then it checks again. And if it's still true, it keeps going. And if it's not true, then it breaks. And there are a lot of other stuff you can do with for loops. Um, but uh, this is the most uh, basic for loop you can write. Um, breaks, uh, I can also talk about breaks. So. If you wanted to break out of the loop, you would just write um, the keyword break with a semicolon as usual, and uh, that will break out of the loop. So it evaluated i equals zero, it printed it, and then it broke it broke out of the loop. So nothing else happened. It didn't go on and perform more iterations. And the keyword, what the keyword continue does is that it tells uh, the, uh, it just terminates the current iteration early and it goes back to the start of the loop and it runs again. So what would happen here is that in each iteration, uh, we would come here and it would continue. It would never run here. It would skip all the things that are after the continue. It would go back up to the loop. And so therefore nothing would happen here because we're always uh, resetting the loop well, not resetting, but going to the next iteration uh, before we're trying to output anything. So uh, I should be com commenting this out instead of deleting it. Uh, while loops. So while loops are pretty similar to what you would expect, um, but uh, except difference from Python is again, you need a you need the brackets around your condition. So you, you just put whatever condition here. Uh, you can put while true, and you also put curly braces. Oh, I should talk about curly braces. So when you have loops like this, uh, you wrap whatever you want to put in the loop in curly braces, unless it's one line, in which case you can just put directly there and with a semicolon. But uh, you might mis make mistakes that way. So curly braces are, uh, oh, it, it won't hurt. And uh, let's say, let's use D again, since we already have it declared. So if I said while D, um, 
you can do something here and I'll keep repeating until the until the condition here is not uh, true so if we made a, a variable I think it's time for J is equal to 6 and while D uh, we decrement J and let's output that and if J is zero, oh, I didn't even talk about ifs. That's bad. But uh, I guess I can now. So if statements, uh, you put an if, and again, you would wrap whatever condition you want in brackets. And so if, let's say if J was zero or negative one, then let's uh, set D is equal to false. And obviously here we, we could have just said break, but I wanted to show you that it wouldn't run if the condition was, um, that's scary. Oh, I forgot to comment this out. Sorry. Uh, that the output's a little confusing. I'll run that again. So J would decrement and it would output. And when it reached negative one, we set the condition to false and the well, while loop is terminated like that and that's a while loop and you can also use uh, breaks and continues and while loops uh, let me see if I have any questions no okay good um, okay let's talk about if else statements and uh, op logical operators and comparison operators so um, so you would wrap whatever condition here in brackets, as I said earlier. And so if I said um, a mod two, and that would evaluate to true because remainder of one divided by two is one. And if you want to say uh, and, uh, you could do the same thing as you did in your Java programming and put two ands like this. Um, you can wrap other stuff in brackets too so um, with ors you can use uh, these symbols um, so or 5 minus 4 that would evaluate to 1 which is also true um, but um, 6 0 would evaluate to false and so what this says is that um, if this condition is true and uh, this condition is true but to determine whether this condition is true, uh, either this or this is true. Um, and that's what these mean. But I don't like typing out these symbols. So we can, you can do in C++ and you can just say and. And you can just say or. And uh, these keywords will just be interpreted by the uh, compiler. And uh, the compiler will understand what you're trying to do here. And to me, it just makes it a lot uh, readable, a lot more readable. Uh, and you have these keywords in Python as well. So let's output true if this is satisfied and else is just if, um, if this is not satisfied, um, then you would uh, go into this block and you would say false. So what happened here was uh, a mod two was true, uh, as I explained earlier, and it came over here and it said five minus four, that's one or zero, one or zero, so one of them is true. So that the entire thing evaluates to true, and it said that that was true. But if I said, um, if I said false here, um, neither one of these would be uh, true so this entire thing would evaluate to false and so none of this would run because uh, for this to be satisfied both these conditions need to be satisfied and since this is not it'll come into this else block here and uh, similar to Python um, you have else if except in Python you had elif in C++ it's else if and you write whatever condition is in here and you can just have a block and whatever 
code you want to put in here. Um, so it'll come into this if. If this if is satisfied, then it'll go in here. If it's not, it'll check this. And if the, none of these are satisfied, it'll go into here. Um, that's the same as whatever, uh, should be the same as whatever programming language you were using before. And uh, yeah. Is there anything else to talk about? Uh, oh, I should talk about uh, not. So let's say, for example, I had uh, this symbol right here. So that's just says the opposite. And so even though this entire thing is false, not false would evaluate to true. And so this entire thing, this entire expression would be true. And therefore this thing is true. And so it, it, it output true right here. Hmm. Is there anything I missed? Oh, yes, there is. Um, let's say I did this to make this not true. And I said A is greater than 2. So in C++, the operators should be the same. So you have greater than, less than, equals, equals, um, greater than equals, less equals, um, not equals, uh, etc. And so these would compare to objects um, like ints, doubles, strings, like that. So if I said else if a is smaller than 2, which it is, then I will let's just output a is small. And that would evaluate because this was not evaluated. Um, so, but if instead this was um, if this if statement was uh, satisfied, then this will not run because it's an else if, if that makes sense. So yeah, that should be mostly it for if else statements. Uh, now we can talk about arrays. So primitive arrays are declared like so. So um, usually in uh, programming contests, you should always declare your arrays globally. So what you would do is you put the type uh, of each element in your array here, and then you would do the name of the array, and then you would add however many uh, square brackets you need. So square bracket, size one of the first dimension and as many dimensions as you want size two and etc so, so if i if i wanted a two-dimensional array um, i would add two square brackets like that i guess to be consistent i should add these to tell you that these are just placeholders for whatever you want to put here so an example would be if i wanted to say int array uh, two two so I've created a two by two integer array and so um, these the array is gonna have I can access the array like array at zero zero uh, well not out here in my code it's a bit bit of a scroll but that's fine um, another benefit of um, Oh, I should talk about why we declare them outside. So if you declare a very large array inside your main function, uh, it's going to give you segmentation fault uh, because I think you're allocating a lot of memory uh, at runtime and you shouldn't do that. And, and um, if you declare them globally, you'll be fine. And another thing is if you declare uh, integer arrays globally, it'll initialize everything to uh, zero for you. So you don't have to do that yourself. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's guaranteed. And then you can access your array elements. Actually, let's start off with a one dimensional array. So if I had an array of length five, and so I should also mention your size in here has to be a constant. So 
you can't have uh, well you shouldn't have an integer that's that's a variable and you do something like array of size a um, if you want to do that we'll talk about vectors later um, so these are always fixed size if you did want a variable just a constant variable just to represent your size you can do something like const int max n that's um, and set it to something like a thousand and in that case you could use max n here if that makes any sense um, so if we had an array uh, of fixed size of length 5, we can access the elements like uh, array of 0 um, and array at whatever index you want. So it would be indexed from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's run a for loop. Actually, I'll make them space separated. So we're what we're doing here is we're going through the length of the array and we're outputting every uh, element in the array by accessing it by the index. So the i in this case would be our indices. We loop i from zero to four inclusive and uh, it would output uh, everything in the array in this case. So as I said before, if you declare outside, it's gonna uh, initialize all your integers to zeros and that, that's mostly helpful in most of the cases. And um, you can also set it to whatever you want. So if I said array of i is equal to i, so I assign it to i, then uh, what would happen here is that uh, it would just uh, it would modify the array like that so you can modify it by accessing the indices um, multi-dimensional okay and you can also initialize your arrays directly so you can say this is equal to six seven whatever thing here and um, just make sure the length is correct and here Again, if I output that, that will give me whatever I initialize uh, the array with. And if we had a two-dimensional array, um, two, two, how you would initialize that is you would put an extra set of braces. So uh, say I wanted the numbers to be one, two, three, four then uh, I make two for loops, so a nested for loop. So for, uh, I'm going to put uh, ij pairs. So as j goes from 0 to 2, um, I want it to output uh, array at i at j. and put a new line here. And so what happened was um, uh, I, let's go through the iteration. So I was zero and J was zero. And so we output it at zero, zero at the first index. So that's a one. And then um, I would still be zero because we're still in this for loop and J went to one. And so it went to zero at one, if that makes sense and so on. So if you wanted to access the uh, individual elements of multidimensional arrays, you would make a nested for loop like so. Um, oh, and if you wanted to fill all your arrays to one value, what you could do is uh, you can just set array at i, j, say, uh, i plus j. And so wh what we do here wouldn't matter anymore. So um, it would just, uh, you can also change it just like how we did before. Uh, oh, right. So 
in a contest, a lot of the times they tell you uh, how the input is going to be. And so, for example, we have uh, N on the first line, and then we would have like A1, A2, A3, all the way to AN. And so this represents the length of whatever sequence they're going to give you, and they give you a sequence of that length. And, and when we look in the constraints, we see that n is less than or equal to, say, 2,000. Then we would want to make an array of at least 2,000 to store this entire sequence in that array. But uh, what we do uh, is that we actually make it a bit more than 2,000, say 2,000 plus 5, just so that uh, the 0 indexing and the 1 indexing uh, wouldn't mess us up. So let's... To give an example, if I said um, I wanted to input uh, three integers, one, two, and three. Um, oh, uh, yes, I should show uh, input output with arrays. Uh, I mean, I meant input. So uh, if I declare an integer n and I take that in from the input file, and then um, I loop from Let's loop from 1 to uh, n inclusive. And what you can do here is directly you could say, instead of a two-dimensional array, I'm just going to make it a one-dimensional array for now. And I'm actually going to use the max n here. OK, so uh, you would just do cn uh, array at i. And what that'll do is it'll just take the input directly into this uh, element of the array, or I should say position in the array. So uh, let's write another loop. Uh, we don't have to, but I will. So let's now output this. So. What would happen here is, uh, so as you can see, we took in the input one, two, three into uh, what here it would be array at one would be one, array at two would be two because that's what our input was, and um, array at three would be three, like that, and uh, which is exactly what we outputted there. OK, uh, vectors. So vectors in C++ um, are, uh, you, you can kind of think of it as like a list in Python, except it's still kind of different. So vectors don't necessarily have a fixed size. And you declare a vector like, <clears throat> vector and whatever type you want to put in here so if we wanted a vector of doubles we would put vector double like that and uh, this vector is a c++ container so sorry it's a scd container so it's designed to be able to store any data structure or data type in here um, so if we wanted a vector of integers um, you would put this and then you put the name in a semicolon like that so that would give you um, a vector of integers which has the name v. So um, so now v would be a vector of integers and you can specify the size of v. So <clears throat> this size doesn't have to be a fixed size. So if I wanted a vector of size 1, I could put v of 1 here. And how you would get the size of a vector is you would call v.size. And that should, oh, this, this input doesn't matter anymore. And that should give you the size of the vector. So initially it was empty, the size was zero, but if you initialize it with one like that, it, it'll give you a vector of size one. If you initialize it with V5, uh, <clears throat> it would have a vector of size five, and it can be variable. So if I said um, A equals five, I put VA, wait, can I do that? I think I can. 
I don't use vectors too often. I mostly use primitive arrays, but um, vectors are certainly very useful as well. And another thing, you can put one more parameter in here, which is what you want the, to fill the vector with. So if you put v of six, uh, v um, a six here, um, then it will give you, uh, actually, I'll just output that. So you can access the elements of a vector just like how you would an array. So let's write a for loop, int i equals zero. i is smaller than uh, v dot size plus plus i. Um, and let's just output v at i. And so that gave us a vector of length a, which is a vector of length five, uh, filled with all sixes. So dot size, we did that. Access with this, we did that. Okay, pushback. So this is uh, the main difference between vectors and arrays is that you can add as many elements to a vector as you want. Well, obviously until you run out of memory. So let's say, let me comment this out then. Uh, let's say V, let's say I wanted to do, let me uncomment that out. I think this is, I don't want to rewrite this. So we can use the push back function, which will push an element to the back of the vector. So if we want it, oh, that's not what I want. Uh, if, if we wanted to add seven to the end, um, we could do that with push back this size didn't change because it was called before the pushback. Um, so that's the most common way, I guess, of uh, putting an element at the back. Another thing you can do is in play back, which does almost the same thing, except I think it is slightly more efficient. And also when you're dealing with pairs, which we're going to talk about later, um, it's going to be used a little bit more. Uh, it's going to be used more easily. Um, iterators. Okay, so um, hmm. uh, I'll just make a quick diagram to explain iterators just to give you a basic idea. So uh, say we had uh, elements and the vector like that. Uh, let me draw five. This is not a good drawing at all, but so what dot begin would be uh, the iterator at the beginning. And what an iterator is, is that it points to a specific um, spot in the vector or in whatever container you're using. In this case, we're using vectors. So um, if my the name of my vector was v, v dot begin would point to the first element, but you can't output v dot begin because it's it's not the value, it's it's what points to it. And uh, what you can do with an iterator is that you can go forwards and backwards, and you would do that with uh, the minus minus operators, and uh, you can also do that with like uh, priv or next. Uh, you can do that with plus plus and so those things would move the iterator forwards and backwards so if I said uh, v dot begin plus plus that would point to this element right here right and so the end of the vector would actually point to you can almost think of it as uh, empty space over here so this is not um, I drawing that probably made that more confusing okay so uh, v dot end would be an iterator pointing to the emptiness over here. So it does not point to the last element here. And so uh, this is useful for us because um, uh, in a for loop, well, first of all, in a for loop, we would just check whether our iterator is at the end or not. And also um, for a lot of functions, um, if you didn't find anything or this thing is invalid, uh, a lot of times it would return uh, 
B.N. like that. And so, um, where was I? Uh, so another way of iterating through a vector would be for um, vector int iterator i uh, it is equal to v dot begin uh, it is not equal to v dot end plus plus it and I, I put it because it just it's just short for iterator and so uh, what, what would happen if you try to output this directly is that it's not going to let you because you, you just can't output iterators like that it points to a specific um, element in the vector but it's not it's not the value so what you want to do to actually get the value here is you would use the asterisk before it to dereference it so um, if you did this that would hopefully give you the uh, correct values um, like that oh, I printed with a new line uh, I should comment this out. It's a bit confused. So that would loop from the beginning of the vector to the end of the vector. And um, the iterators are uh, important, uh, not just for uh, for loops. Actually, in, with for loops, you probably don't need to use iterators. You can just use indices. But for a lot of uh, vector methods and functions, you're going to need to uh, use iterators for those. Um, and also, usually people don't write this. Um, if you're using uh, a newer version of C++, you can just put auto here, and that'll that'll uh, just the compiler will know what type this should be, and it'll just automatically do it for you. Um, and that's it for iterators mostly. Um, there's also R begin, which starts. Um, uh, with like this and there's like our end that starts here this is all in the reference by the way um, so if I tried to look for a vector um, it would tell me a lot of these things um, if you just scroll down um, iterators like begin and our begin our end like that and uh, whatever you need to find should all be in the docs. So if you ever need to refer back uh, to the docs, um, that would be uh, very helpful for you, uh, like uh, c++.com or whatever reference I linked up there. Uh, I talked about this. OK, uh, let, now let's get into some methods. Um, or actually this is a function so reverse reverses the entire vector so back before back then we had um, oh sorry I forgot to mention you can also initialize vectors like this so if I just put some random numbers here and uh, if I output it that Um, that would also be a valid way of initializing a vector. So it gave you all the elements like that. Uh, okay, so reverse. I'm just giving you some examples of uh, functions that you can use on vectors. So uh, if you were to do v reverse v.begin v.end, that would reverse the entire vector. like that so before it output it like that after that it was like that okay that should be pretty straightforward and so notice how this function uses iterators instead of uh, indices um, erase and remove I actually don't want to talk about this right now um, let's talk about insert so you can insert an element uh, like this so v dot insert and if I wanted to insert something at the beginning I could do v dot begin and I would just put whatever I want to insert here 
So hopefully now it gives me a four. I shouldn't be outputting that much stuff. That's a little confusing actually. Okay, so before we had this, but now we've inserted a four at the front here. So that's just how insert works. Uh, clear, clear is very useful. I, I, I probably use this uh, method the most. Uh, and also pushback, obviously, but uh, clear just clears the entire vector. So the vector becomes empty and I hope there's no output. Yeah, okay. So that's pretty much all for vector methods. And we also talked about std strings. So a lot of the things you do with vectors, you can also do with string. So have, if I had a string name equals ABCD, and I wanted to reverse the entire string, I believe you could just do name.begin, name.end. And that would reverse the string as well. And I think, uh, so just, just like that, it would output the reverse because we reversed it. Uh, so strings like vectors, they're, they're both not primitive types. They're, uh, SCD objects. So you can use most, well, you can use a lot of methods, uh, on both of them. And strings are uh, strings also have iterators like that. Uh, oh, I didn't talk about. So if you just wanted to access all of the elements in a vector, um, instead of creating a for loop with indices or iterators, you could just do for int, let's say k and v, and then you do. Uh, let's just output that. And uh, so what this is saying is uh, for every integer k and v, we're outputting k. So I, I find this to be um, a lot shorter than whatever we did up here. So this is just an easier way to access the elements if you don't need to modify to anything. Okay, uh, pairs. So pairs are exactly what they sound like. So you would write pair type one here and then type two. So pair stores a pair of uh, objects like that. And you can also store a pair within a pair. You can store a pair. You can store a vector of pairs. You can have an array of pairs. Um, so for example, if I wanted a pair of a string and an integer, and you put the name of the pair here. So let's name that P. Uh, let me check if we, I have any questions. No. Okay. If you have any questions, please, please ask. Anyways, um, so you can uh, initialize P just by uh, putting curly braces. So if I want to say name um, and an integer six, and that would uh, just in initialize P as a pair of this string and this integer, as we declared here. And if you wanted to access the elements, you would do uh, P dot first to get the first element, and then P dot second uh, for the second element. Perfect, so that would work like that. And if you didn't do that, what uh, you can also say p dot first equals name p dot second equals seven or whatever you want and that would work uh, that would also do the same thing oh uh, i could give an example of for example storing a pair of ints uh, inside a pair of strings, sorry, a pair of strings and, and a pair of ints. I don't know how to say this, but you, you know what I mean? Like, um, so if I said uh, p.first was name, we could say p.second.first 
is equal to seven and p dot second dot second is equal to two and so th this kind of acts like a triple in a, in a way um, uh, there are also tuples in C++ but I don't use them often uh, they're a little bit weird to use in my opinion so you could uh, output them like that oh I didn't put a space here it doesn't matter too much though so you can see we have a pair of um, a string and a pair and obviously again you could initialize them directly with uh, uh, whatever string here and then you can put brackets here one two and that should also do the same thing just notice that I deleted whatever I had before which is not what I intended okay let's talk about functions so we already have a function here it's called main it's what's gonna be called first when your program's been run um, but you can also declare functions of your own so uh, if I wanted to make another function um, uh, so how you would do functions is you put the return type here and you put the name of the function and then uh, the uh, the type of your parameter parameter one and then you would put curly braces and then you would return whatever your return type whatever you want to return and then you would put some curly braces to close it so uh, for example if I wanted to make a function that returns a boolean then I would say bool is let, let's make a function that checks if a number is odd so bool is odd um, we open that up with a bracket I, I've been using brackets like round brackets and square brackets and these interchangeably um, that's probably not correct but it's kind of a habit so let's take in an integer uh, m and so this is what we're going to pass in, and C++ is passing by value, so you don't have to uh, worry about uh, the original value changing inside the function. So what we'll do here is uh, we can say if m mod 2 is 1, then we return true. Otherwise, we can return false. So that'll be a valid function like that. Um, let's try to test this function. So the way you run a function is that um, you just call the function by using its name. So uh, let's see out is odd. And let's use a variable that we declared before. Uh, let's use a. So we want to check if A is odd, and it's 5, so it should be odd. And is odd would return 1, because uh, 1 is the same as true. So uh, if you had this function after the main function, you would notice that uh, this shouldn't work. So it says is odd was not declared in the scope. So you have to declare all your functions uh, before your main function. So if uh, this is declared here, um, so that is uh, used and then declared that's not okay. Um, so either you can move the entire thing up or if you want, you can just declare it without initializing it. Uh, like is odd and um, and then if you just put a semicolon without um, initializing anything, I believe this should still work like that. Okay. Um, okay. Um, uh, now let's, I'm going to give you some examples of built-in functions. So, uh, I don't want to scroll every time. I'm just going to make new variables. Let's say x equals 2, 
Well, actually, I can take them in as from the input file. That would be a bit nicer. So min, um, let's say five seven. Um, if we wanted min x y, um, as the name implies, it's going to give us the minimum uh, value between x and y, and so the minimum between five and seven would be five. Um, but if I had, uh, for example, another integer. Okay, uh, let's say I had a long long of z equals six, and I wanted to compare that with x instead. Uh, what you'll notice is that it'll uh, the compiler starts getting mad at you um, because you're trying to. Uh, it's only defined for an integer and an integer, it doesn't know what to do when there's an integer and a long long, even though it, it should be a, pretty obvious to us. What you could do is uh, you could just cast the first one to a long long like that, and uh, that should also work now. You, you could have also cast the second one to an int. So how you cast is you, you put in braces and then you put whatever type you want to cast to like that. And now let's say we wanted to compare um, x, y, and z. So if you tried to put x, comma, y, comma, z, um, that would not work because min only uh, does it for two values. Um, so that, your, your compiler's mad at you again. Um, so what a lot of people would do is they would just take the minimum of the second two and then take the minimum between the minimums, between x and the minimum, and that would work just fine. And let me put three here. Whoops. So that would work fine. Um, another cool thing you can do is instead of doing this, you can put these in curly braces. And now you can just put uh, whatever numbers you want in here, like as many as you want. And this should give you the minimum between everything inside the curly braces like that. But um, unfortunately, you can't you can't put a vector in here or anything. It's not going to give you the minimum across the whole vector. It, it's only going to work for uh, initializer lists, I believe. And the maximum is the same. It's going to give you the maximum between all these numbers. And so just just like that, the maximum is just the uh, opposite of min. Uh, seal gives you the ceiling floor. I, I don't. I don't think I can have to demonstrate these. So seal gives you the ceiling uh, of a result. Uh, floor uh, ceiling means the smallest integer that is not less than the number. Actually, I uh, I should define that a little better. Uh, greatest integer less than hmm, less than or equal to x so that's that would be floor of x and the ceiling is the least integer greater than or equal to x that's I think I was close there um, so these are just some examples of C++ uh, built-in functions it's also like square root log uh, log 2 um, I don't think I have to demonstrate those. Um, I think let's talk about swap. So uh, I, let's comment this out. So I'm still going to take an in input into X and Y, but now um, we're going to output X and Y as they are from the input. And let's do swap X, Y and let's output them again in that order and what you'll notice is uh, 3 and 7 and now there's 7 and 3 because we swapped the two variables so this is sometimes useful oh do we have questions post the file when I'm done yeah sure why not um, What was I talking about? Oh, swap. Yeah, I already talked about that, didn't I? Yeah, I did. 
Okay, so let's go back to uh, arrays and vectors. So, and I want to talk about sorting. So the sort function, uh, how you would use it. Actually, let's pretend I didn't know how to use the sort function. And I would just go to the, vec uh, the reference here. And uh, I hope this works. Okay, so it takes you to the page where it describes the, f the sort function. And you read all of this, and it's a little bit confusing. But um, you can uh, go to the examples. That usually gives you a better idea of what that does. So, for example, if you had uh, an array, how it sorts that is uh, it puts the array, and then it puts plus 8. And you, you look here, and it says first, uh, last. So inclusive first, exclusive last. So it would sort all the uh, elements from 0 to uh, 7. And that's actually it's sorted from, oh, sorry, that, that was a vector. I should talk about arrays. You know what? Never mind. I'll just demonstrate it. So uh, this is a bit of a scroll, but. I'll just make a new array. So I'm kind of lazy with my variables. Don't don't do that when you're actually programming. But um, let's just make an array. Um, um, let me make it not sorted like that. And so with the sort function, you would um, if you wanted to sort the entire thing, uh, you would do something like this. And now let's uh, go through, let me demonstrate it and then I'll show you. So uh, ignore that. Uh, so what we had here was an array of 4, 6, 3, 1, 5. And after using sort, we had 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that sorted the array for us. And uh, what happened here was that um, I think, I believe if I put plus 0 here, that wouldn't matter because uh, um, we, plus 0 does nothing. So we can usually just ignore that. Um, but if it makes it a little bit clearer, um, this is the index you want to start at. This is the index you want to end at, but you don't want to include. So, but instead, if I wanted to start at this position and just sort um, these uh, three elements, uh, what would happen is uh, these two elements stay the same because I didn't sort them. And from two to two inclusive to five exclusive, which is three, one, five, uh, it sorted the array like that, uh, that part of the array. So one, three, five, it would be the correct sorting of that. And uh, to demonstrate sort with vectors, um, so if you had a vector, <coughs> again, uh, like that, just, just a random vector, how you would sort it is, if you wanted to sort the entire thing, you would use its iterators, so v.begin, Oops. V dot end. And let's just output everything in the vector. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. What, what have I done? Oh, I already have the vector v. Whoops. Actually, yeah, I'll, I'll just name it something different. Oh, I, I forgot to uh, change the name here. Hopefully it works now. Okay, so 
Wow, a lot of duplicate elements. That's not what I wanted. Uh, let me change that so that it's clear. Okay, so that would sort the entire vector like that. And with vectors, I believe uh, you can also do almost the same thing. So if I'd said uh, vector dot begin plus three, um, that should only sort these two elements. Right, so uh, six, four, eight, which is the first three, they stayed the same because uh, the index starts at zero, right? So this is zero, this is one, this is two. Once it reached three, this is um, where we started. So 87 to nine, uh, I sorted that, so it became 987. Um, and you'll notice here that uh, you can add another parameter in here, uh, which is the comparator. And so uh, what you can do is you can um, instead put a function here. So let's define a function bool c. Uh, and uh, when you're comparing two things, you want to pass in two things. So int a and b, and we want to return uh, a greater than b. So what this means is that um, if a is greater than b, then you want a in front of b. So what that does is that it's going to, oh, do I already have a variable c? I do. Let's just make that name a little bit more descriptive. Okay, so um, let's sort the entire vector with this with our custom comparator function. And so hopefully what that does is that it sorts it in reverse order and sorry, not in reverse order, but in uh, non increasing order, or in this case, since everything's distinct. In, um, in decreasing order. So, and that what happened there was uh, we did, we gave it a custom function to compare the, the elements with. So, but instead, if we had smaller than, uh, then it would sort like normal. But obviously, um, doing uh, making another function is a little bit annoying. So you can use lambdas. So you put two square brackets and then whatever parameters you want in here in A and B, and you can put curly braces. Uh, you start off with a curly brace and you just define the function as you normally would. And so that should uh, work as well. So I didn't pass in any co um, comparator functions. What I instead did was I just made a lambda function like that, just inline. Uh, this is a pretty easy way of uh, sorting it however you like as well. And you can sort any um, of the basic stuff. You can sort ints, doubles, you can sort uh, pairs. And usually the default is just uh, non-decreasing order, um, uh, which is like increasing order, except adjacent elements can be like the same. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it for sorting, I believe. Um, assert assert is a pretty special uh, function that I think is a little bit uh, overlooked. So assert is what it does is that you put uh, a, a boolean value in here or something that will evaluate to either true or false. So and if it's false, then it crashes your program. And uh, this is actually pretty useful because sometimes when you submit to an online judge, you don't know exactly what's wrong. So what you uh, so if you assert a condition and you realize uh, that's the thing that's failing and the verdict that the judge gives you is aborted, then you know exactly what the issue is. And so uh, if you say as assert zero, so that's a false value and it'll say assertion failed and it crashes your program so that aborts, it'll, I think it should give off a runtime error if you were submitting to uh, uh, whatever online judge you use, but if this value evaluates to uh, true, then it would not crash. So this is a, a good way to try to find out uh, what your what your program where your program is going wrong. Uh, if you don't already have the test cases from there. Um, wow, it's five fifty four. Hmm. Okay, I, I think I can talk about defines. So. What define does is that um, 
uh, it replaces whatever is there. Um, so usually you would add it to like the top. So if I wanted to define um, uh, CC as a CN, then whenever it sees this thing, it's going to replace it with CN. So um, this is just an example. You, should, you don't actually do this. Um, like just use CN, but um, you, you could technically just do this if you wanted to. I have a feeling, never mind. So uh, that would also just take in X as, as the input. I, although I don't know why you would do this. I should, I should have probably chose a better use of define than this. Oh, I know. Um, so anyways, I um, wanted to show that that worked, even though CC doesn't actually mean anything. Um, we, we put a define here, so it replaced whatever that was in here to here. Um, and instead of const in max n 2000 plus 5, um, like, uh, I guess you could also do something like define max n 2000. And it would replace this max n with whatever 2000 is in here. Um, type def um, is almost the same thing, except it follows. Uh, there's a subtle difference. So type def follows uh, variable scopes. So it would only uh, define the type as whatever uh, you define it to inside the scope that it was that type def was used. So if I use type def. Uh, long long ll I, I think that's how you use it i'm actually not completely sure um then when you use uh, llx it will replace ll with um long long which is what we defined it as so let's run this so yeah that worked as intended but um if let's say instead we put this uh, hmm. whoops like if we said Type def long long ll here. Uh, I don't use type def often. I'm, I'm hoping I'm not wrong about this, but um, if you have type def in here, then it would say ll is not defined. So type def would only work in this inside this scope, but not here. But if instead you said uh, define ll long long, um, what would happen is this LL should be able to be defined. It'll it'll just this define statement will work for whatever the rest of your program does. Um, and so 558, we're pretty much at the end. Uh, you you don't need to know a ton of C to start off in uh, competitive programming. Um, I think this much uh, should get you started. Um, you can learn the rest along the way. Um, obviously, use use Google searches, c++.com, CPP reference is another one, um, uh, Stack Overflow. Um, you can also ask in Discord anytime. And the best way to become familiar with it is to just more use it more often. So uh, I encourage you to go try some problems. Um, ooh, I forgot I had to talk about the contest. Okay, uh, first of all, are there any questions? Don't think so. Okay, so uh, if there is, uh, you should ask. Um, also, uh, I don't know if Gordon demonstrated submitting to uh, Dmod, so it's pretty uh, simple. So you go to the problem and uh, you just click the top right here. You click uh, Submit Solution. And you would just put your code in here, and I don't have anything in here right now. And you click the submit button, and this would, uh, and it'll give you whatever verdict uh, your code does. So uh, yes, and, and you can see your uh, source and everything. So um, for example, this problem I gave you that you could go try out. Um, just 
th these are really easy problems. Um, the point is that you use C++ to solve them, so you get used to how to use the language. So uh, the same thing, you go to submit solution, you can read the statement, go to submit solution, paste your code in here, hit submit. Pretty simple. Um, uh, I know it's six, let me just talk for five minutes about uh, the upcoming contest. So we're planning to host a contest uh, this weekend, um, it'll be the warm-up contest, and it'll be completely solvable with the junior concepts. So the point is to uh, get everyone warmed up and see, uh, let us see like what you know, what your uh, skill level right now is, and also uh, we need to get you familiar with the uh, contest system, the contest platform. That's the Dom Judge. And uh, we don't know what day or time it will be yet, like either Saturday or Sunday, but we're not sure. Later on, we're going, so later uh, in the polls, we'll poll for whether uh, Saturday or Sunday, I think. Any questions? Okay, uh, if not, just uh, we'll, we'll send out a poll later about the contest go, go. Ah. yeah uh i missed the question but uh you can always uh, ask later but um uh anyways if there are no more questions then i think this will be it for the first week of uh comsec club senior stream and uh thank you for coming and uh, i guess class is dismissed Okay, bye.